Hello and welcome to another episode of Energy Express. I'm your host, Zach Harold, and I'm coming to you once again from our YouTube studio in Charleston. And I am so grateful that you're here. Actually, that's what we're going to start today's episode with. We're going to talk with Misha Poor. She's West Virginia University's Vice President of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion about Hello friends, Misha Poor here, Vice President for the Division of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion at West Virginia University. Let's talk. Today, let's talk about wellness. There's a lot of ways to measure wellness. Oftentimes, we tend to focus on our physical wellness, but there are different forms of wellness, such as physical, mental, financial, spiritual, or social wellness, just to name a few. If you did a quick check-in with yourself, how would you say you're doing in your day-to-day -day life? How's your energy? Are you eating healthy meals? Getting some exercise? Do you feel included in activities? Do you feel safe and protected? It's important for each of us to take a moment to really ask ourselves how we're doing. You might be doing great or you may feel you need a little support. Wherever you are in your self check-in is important. If you're feeling not so good, reach out to a trusted adult in your life. Some examples are parents or grandparents, a teacher or a coach. Be sure and ask for help. There's a whole community out there who wants you to be well. Like they say, when you know better, you do better. And we all can do better. See you next time. All right, time to get outside. Dave McGill is going to teach us about some common and not so common trees you'll find in West Virginia's woods and some fun facts about them. Hi, my name is Dave McGill. I'm the Forest Resources Extension Specialist here at West Virginia University. And today we're out at the West Virginia University farm woodlot and we're going to go on a scavenger hunt to look for some exotic and uncommon trees. Uh, we're going to look at Norway spruce and the bald cypress. So let's go hit the trail and see if we can find these trees in the wild. Okay, so as we go out looking at trees and trying to identify them, there's, there's a couple main features that we want to take a look at. And the main feature is, ask yourself the question, is this tree going to retain its leaves all year? Is it evergreen? Or is it gonna drop its leaves in the winter? That is, is it deciduous? So the nice thing about going out and looking at trees and seeing an evergreen tree is that you can actually use the leaves any time of the year to identify it. So for example, here's a hemlock an eastern hemlock. This is a big tree that grows down in usually pretty moist conditions, down in ravines, near creeks and streams. And you can look at the leaves on this and they're flattened leaves. They're tiny little long flattened leaves that if you turn them upside down they look silvery. And when you look really close at those silvery lines they're little lines of a bunch of little dots. And those are called stomates. It's how a tree brings atmosphere or carbon dioxide into its leaves and turns it into oxygen. One of the things about evergreens is uh, they all have cones of some kind. And uh, these are little hemlock cones. Look how tiny those are. Some of you might have seen larger cones like from the white pine or the Norway spruce, but these are small little cones and the cone scales have little rounded edges on them. Things are blooming, but not all the leaves are out yet, and so we can use bark to identify trees. Like this is a real distinctive one. This is black cherry, and uh, you can tell it by its, its very dark stem, and it has burnt cornflake or burnt potato chip bark all the way up the stem. Okay, so we've come across a bunch of uh, small, scraggly little box elders that don't grow straight and tall like some of the trees we know. And there's a number of features about box elder that allow us to identify it. So one of the things about the box elder, of course, is the bright green stems you usually see. A lot of times you'll see it sprouting up along the stem of, the, of a bigger tree. But bright green, 
and then has opposite branching. If leaves were on this, they'd also have opposite leaf arrangement where you have a leaf on this side and a leaf on the other side. Okay, we've come across some bald cypress here on the West Virginia University Farm woodlot. We're gonna take a look at some of the features of this tree that make it really unique. So this is actually part of an old plantation where uh, uh, the former silviculture professor, Dr. Ken Carvel, who uh, came in here with his students in 1962 and planted these down in this bottom because that's where bald cypress grows. Generally, bald cypress comes from the southern states like Louisiana where there's lots of swamps. So it's not native to West Virginia, it's exotic, but it grows here in these special sites like this wet bottom here. So uh, anyway, 62 years old this year. So this is the bark, it's very scaly. And if you can uh, see up above, it, uh, these trees are like pines in that they have a one central stem, not a whole lot of branches uh, that come out and, and divide, but it goes all the way up uh, to the very top as a single stem. So these are knees of the bald cypress and they're actually growing up from the roots. There's the main tree over there. The roots come out here and these knees grow up. And we think that these knees are helping the roots that are down in this mucky, wet soil down in this bottom uh, breathe, actually. So it's, it has a very thin bark on it, and so air is taken in through these things and helps the, the roots stay alive under basically a real mucky, wet soil. Another cool feature about the bald cypress are these buttresses or supports that grow out uh, in kind of a, a fluted style, in and out. They really help support the tree in these wet soils that it grows in or swamps and uh, so besides the the knees that grow up uh, this is a pretty cool feature that you don't find in a lot of trees here in the in the parts of the united states that we live in in west virginia uh, but you find a lot more down in the tropics okay so not all cone bearing trees like pines and spruces are evergreen but this one, the bald cypress, loses its leaves every year. It drops its leaves and fall. These needles, they turn uh, russet brown, real beautiful, and then fall to the ground. And here's, a, here's some, some of them on the forest floor that we found. Uh, but if you look close at these little branchlets that drop off, they're small little linear leaves or, or straight leaves that are kind of more like a, a, a pine tree than, a, than one of the hardwood or broadleaf trees we see in our state. Bald cypress is one of the most uh, 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 resistant to decay, so the wood will not decay, and that's why this dead tree is still standing here. It's not rotting, it's not gonna fall down, and so the nice thing about that is animals can create cavities in these trees and use it for nesting, and, and, uh, and uh, for nesting mostly, and, and continue to feed on little creatures that are beneath the bark and, and all along the stem of the tree. So another exotic species we don't really have here in West Virginia as a native tree, but we plant it a lot, is the Norway spruce. There's one back up here on the hillside that you can see, and if you look closely, you can almost see the cones. That's one unique feature about this spruce tree. One, it retains its ne needles all, all year long, it's evergreen, and it has these giant cones, one of the largest cones here in West Virginia. So this is Norway spruce. This tree rivals some of the largest evergreens we have here in West Virginia, even though it's not from West Virginia. So here's one of the uh, cones. <laughs> it's pretty large, it's about six inches long. And a lot of times the squirrels will cut them down to, to eat them, but these things have just fallen off after they've shed the seed. And so you can find them scattered all around the ground and, it's pretty distinctive. If you see a cone this big, more than likely it's a Norway spruce. And uh, the other cone of this size would be our eastern white pine, but it looks uh, different than this. And the needles on white pine are much longer. These needles on the Norway spruce are actually, if you pull one off, they're very pointed, like a little needle. 
And if you roll them in your finger, you'll feel that it's four-sided. So uh, pines have much longer needles than these. The spruces are sharp, and you know if you tap that tree, it's a spruce because they're so pointy. One of the other ways to identify this, though, is not, uh, you know, besides the large cones, when you look at the tree from a distance, you can see that the main branches come out and then it has all these pendulous or drooping branchlets that hang down from it. If you're out on a day like this where there's no leaves on the tree, remember those three features we talked about the trees, whether or not it has leaves, the branching, is it opposite branching or alternate branching, and the type of bark it may have, is it smooth or like the burnt cornflake bark we saw in black cherry. So get out there, look at trees, and enjoy the day. I think sometimes we take for granted all the beautiful things we get from the trees that are all around us. That's what Karen Cox is here to talk about. Let's check it out. Hi, I'm Karen Cox from the WVU Extension Service. And what's your name? Adeline. Hi, Adeline. It's lovely to meet you. And we are here to find out all of the cool things that trees give us. So, right here, what is this? A present. A present, that's right. right. And this is a present from trees. So what's the first thing you see? Um, wrapping paper with trees on it. Wrapping paper with trees on it, that's right. So what's wrapping paper made out of? Paper. And it's made from trees. That's right, that's right. So paper and wrapping paper that makes all your presents so pretty comes from trees. So why don't you go ahead and open this and let's see what's inside. Open. This is a little toy car. What's it made out of? Trees. It's made out because of wood. That's right, and it comes from trees. That's, that's oh, let's see. It kind of looks like a boomerang. Another piece of wood. There's some pieces of wood. There are a lot of pieces of wood. Yeah, wood makes a lot of things. We should make like a little, um, like a little town to drive the little car in. Yeah, so trees. Whoa, that's a whole farm! <laughs> that's so cool! Alright. So Alright, so let's look at these pieces here. Let's put this, let's put this together. So wood, what what did wood make on our barn? It made the roof. What else? The floor, everything, the walls, everything. All right, what else is in our box? Our gift from the tree. Pencils. Pencils. Do pencils they're come made. from trees? Yeah, but they're made with wood. They're made with wood. What's this thing? Rubber bands. A rubber band. Does that come from a tree? Do. <laughs> yeah. Do. Yeah. Rubber bands come from the sap of some trees. So there are actually some trees that have some a sap called latex, and that's what we use to make rubber bands. And so the erasers on your pencils also have some bits of tree. It's a coloring activity book. Do you like the color? Yes. Yes. So that's a little more exciting kind of paper, isn't it? Right? And who's on that coloring book? That is Smokey the Bear. Have you ever heard of Smokey the Bear? No. So Smokey, he was found after a really big forest fire. He was actually a little bear cub. And Smokey tells all of the kids out there to not play with matches because matches can start wildfires. And wildfires can be very dangerous because we don't want to lose all our beautiful trees to a wildfire. Yeah, they help you breathe. You know what? That's in this box too. There's <laughs> air in the box. So trees actually give us nice clean air. They clean all of the little particles out of the air and they clean out a lot of bad chemicals from the air too. So they give us fresh, clean oxygen. <sighs> Take a deep breath. Doesn't that feel good? It feels good. 
connecting the box. This is a special gift for a little girl named Adeline. <laughs> This is the best one yet. <laughs> what is it? It's a unicorn. And what's it made out of? What? And what? I can paint it. And you can paint it. That's right. But you know what's so cool about this unicorn? Mm -hmm. Is we know it's made from a tree, right? Yeah. But you can find out how old this unicorn is by counting the rings on the tree. So we can see one, two, two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'm only six. These are all different types of food that come from trees. That's cool. So let's see what we have here. We have these little things. Can't really smell them because they're still in their little berry, but smell this. This smells really nice. So this is called allspice. And allspice is used for a lot of uh, cooking when you're making breads and cookies and things like that. This is something that you probably have a lot of. So what is this? Do you know? So cinnamon. Cinnamon, that's right. Isn't that, isn't that, that spicy? Cinnamon is the bark off of a tree. So this is actual cinnamon from when it looks like when you take it off the tree. All right. So do you know what these are? These are cloves. Yeah. They're really strong. So usually what you do is you'll grind these up until it looks like a powder, like your cinnamon. But this is what it looks like when it's pulled. What other kinds of foods do you think come from trees? Um, fruits. Fruits, that's right. That is a grapefruit. Oranges, a lemon. This is amazing. I've got coconut and avocado. Apple, I love apples. Plum, that's right. There's some other things that come from trees that may not be so obvious. All right, so let's try a couple things. What about that? Orange juice. Orange juice. So orange juice comes from? Oranges. Oranges, right? And what about that box? What's it made out of? Trees. It's made out of paper, which comes from trees. Yeah. What about this one? butter. So apple butter has what do you think in it? Apples. Apples, right? And, and it's also got your favorite ingredient, cinnamon. Cinnamon. And it also has uh, cloves, right? So we have cloves and cinnamon and allspice all mixed together with an apple to get Apple butter, right? What's this? Maple syrup. That's right. So maple syrup comes from maple trees. And what we do is we collect all the sap in the beginning of the year when it's really cold out and the trees are just starting to wake up. And we cook it down and get yummy, yummy maple syrup. Alright, I got one more thing in here. That is a card. Everything made of paper. Everything's made of trees! And I just want to say thank you. This is so cool. I'm trees are awesome, time. aren't they? Yeah, I'm gonna play with the corn. How about some yoga? No, not yogurt. That's what I had for breakfast. Yoga, you know, like stretching and stuff. Stephanie Lusk is gonna take us through a special exercise that goes from seed to tree. Let's try it. Stephanie and today I'd like to invite you to do a little bit of yoga with me. Uh, the weather is getting warmer and everything's starting to green up and bloom and bud and that makes me really excited. 
So we're going to do a special kind of yoga today to help celebrate the warm weather and all things that grow. This type of yoga is called seed to tree yoga. So we're going to start out being teeny tiny little seeds and then we're going to expand and grow some sprouts and then at the very end we're going to become big tall trees. We're going to start out being our teeny tiny little seeds. So we need to curl up into a little ball and let's do that by coming around and we're going to have our knees a little bit wide so a little bit of space between them and we're going to lean forward. So we're going to touch our forehead to the ground and we're going to bring our hands behind. So this is called child's pose, and this is when we're our seed. Enjoy a few breaths here. All right, so it's time to get moving. Our seed's coming alive. So we're gonna take a big breath in, and we're gonna push up on all fours. Guys, our seeds gonna start coming alive. So let's take a breath in and on our exhale, let's extend our right hand. Very good. And now inhale and exhale to extend your left hand. And now let's try that with our feet and legs. Take a big breath in and extend your right leg. And now your other leg. sprout up out of the ground. So we're going to go from all fours and we're going to turn our feet under and we're going to push up. Right. So once I get here, I like to move around a little bit and I bet your seedling will be moving around a little bit. All right, now let's just take a breath in and enjoy some stillness. your feet to your hands so you could do that with a jump you could do that just walking straight forward or you could kind of crisscross and really take your time all right so now we're down here and let's just take our hands over to the left stretch a little bit this way and now crawl them over to the right and stretch a little bit this way now we're gonna go back to the middle and we're gonna inhale take a big breath in and as we exhale I just want you to slowly roll up as slow as you've ever done it before here to the top just go ahead and relax your shoulders if you want to bring them down we're gonna take a big breath in and reach big and tall to the sky like you're the tallest tree ever and you know sometimes trees bend a little bit when the wind blows so we're gonna take our tree and we're gonna tilt to the right and back and now let's tilt our tree to the left tilt and back very good you guys so the last move that we're going to try today is called tree pose and since it's seed to tree yoga i can't think of a better way to end so tree pose is a pose where you practice your balance 
So we're gonna just try and practice a little bit and we're just gonna raise our right foot off the ground. And now our left foot. And very good. So now let's try tree pose. There's a few different ways you can try it. You can start by just lifting your right foot off the ground. You're gonna rest on your toes and this is tree pose. Maybe you want to hold your hands here. Maybe you want to be a big tall tree and extend your branches like this. Okay, and if this is a little bit too easy for you, you can try just a little bit more. You can take your foot and rest it on your calf. Okay, and you can rest your hands here. Or here. All right, exhale. Very good. Now let's try the same thing on the left side. Let's go ahead and try the first part where we just use our toes. Alright, and then we can rest our hands here, or we can move it on up and rest your foot on your calf and have some branches. Grow some branches, yeah. Alright, and now you can rest. Take another big breath in, reach up tall. Thank you guys so much for joining me for a little bit of yoga today. Have fun. That's all we got for today, but you can join us right back here for another episode of Energy Express tomorrow morning.